everyone. I'm happy to have you here. It's a beautiful day outside in my backyard. So I thought that I would take advantage and reshoot my Book of Shadows video. The first one was a little shaky and I feel like I didn't really have a chance to talk about the pages that I wanted to do. So I just want to do a little redo. There is going to be repeating information in this video, but there's also some new stuff too. I hope that you enjoy my little book. And if you hear weird dog noises, it's Mr. Winkles, my pug. He is sitting beside me enjoying the sunshine. So this is the first page. It's just a little collage that I did. I love the symbology and the pictures in it. And then of course, I'm just gonna move it over a little bit. A little witch bell. Um, here is the opening pages little envelope because all of the cool witches out there seem to have these beautiful envelopes in their book and I wanted to also have one in mine. This is of course the Norse Tree of Life. I have added it to the book in honor of my ancestors, my family, um, where they come from. So this is there to honor them. I don't prescribe to a heathen path but I felt it was really important to show my ancestors and, and what they believe. So that's why this is here and it's right on the main page. This is where my book blessing is going to go once I write one. It's been a work in progress because I don't want to, I want to do a really good job on it. Oops. This page, I'm going to use this guy to kind of, the many uses for balls. <laughs> um, this is dedicated to my grandmother, so I call this grandmother's wisdom. My grandmother is always coming up with and saying these different sayings and stories and she's very superstitious and so these are just all kinds of things she has said to me and probably all of her grandkids over the years and I wanted those stories to be represented here. I also have my grandfather's story about thunderstorms that he used to tell us when we were kids so we wouldn't be scared. So all of that kind of stuff is in here. One of my favorite things that she always said was that the clouds look like scales, that rain is coming. And it's so true. Every time the clouds are scaly, it rains. And sometimes I think Nan is more better at reading the weather than the weathermen sometimes. So I just, I love stuff like that. So all kinds of old sayings that she used to tell us. And just more on this page here. Plus different little remedies that she's that she's given me over the years and nursery rhymes she said so it's just kind of to honor her. Next up, whoops, little shake there for you, um, is this page here, which is all spells that I had in my very first kind of spell book that I had. It wasn't a book of shadows. I didn't really know what a book of shadows was, but I sure knew what spells were. So these are ones that I've actually committed to memory, and I thought it would be kind of cool to dedicate a page in the book to these old spells that I knew. My favorite being the cure for fever. Three ladies came from the east, one with fire and two with frost. Out with the fire and in with the frost. If anybody knows the origins of that or the story behind it, I would love to know more because all I have is that little verse that I've memorized. Here we have some numerology, which I'm just going to kind of skip over a little bit and not go too into. And then here we have this page, which is just different stories that people have told me over the years, different remedies, stuff like that. I wanted to honor all of those little tidbits that I've picked up that people have told me so that way I would have it kind of committed to a book so I'd always remember. One of my favorite little stories was um, I did a drum workshop many, many, many years ago and the fellow that did it was cleansing our house to kind of cleanse the space and my cat was sitting in the corner of the room and when he got to the cat, the cat just like puffed up like a huge ball and just shot out the window. The window was open and there was no screen. The fellow had said that he, when you're cleansing a house, that dark spirits can sometimes latch onto the back of your pets and kind of 
drive away or ride away, if you will, um, on their backs to get out. So I thought that that was a really, really cool story. So I thought that I would share that in my book. This page here is just kind of a funny little page dedicated to my inner child. I remember when I was a kid reading this spell in a werewolf book and I was full on dead set on becoming a werewolf. I mean, I was probably like 10 years old. I was really, really young. I was still little. And I had no idea how to click the ingredients or anything, but I was making it happen. Luckily, I never did the spell. I would totally be dead. <laughs> Poisoned in the woods behind my house. So that page, that's what that's all about. That's just a little dedication to my inner child. And that's just a continued, some zodiac stuff. This is uh, mine and my husband's zodiac signs and just a little bit of information about us and our relationship, which I thought was really, really cool. Little page dedicated to chaos with some of my favorite sigils. I don't know about you, but my life is full of chaos, so I needed a little chaos in my book. Here's a couple of bath re recipes. I think that magical baths are probably one of the easiest, most fun and luxurious ways to celebrate magic and to be witchy. So I have a couple of my favorite remedies here. This page is dedicated to my familiars, the frog or toad and the crow or raven. I had this, it was about, it was 2016, which was a really bad year. And I think it was a bad year for a lot of people, I mean, with all the celebrity deaths and everything that happened that year. Um, but I saw frogs and toads everywhere that year and I was dreaming about them. It was crazy. So I felt like the strange connection to frogs and toads that year. So I've definitely, that's a new thing that's kind of developed. So I've had to make sure that they were in the book. And then of course the crow or the raven, which isn't really a surprise to anyone. Uh, there's, I think there's a reason, Elvine Green, who I love and adore, said in one of her videos, like cliches are kind of a cliche for a reason. And I think, and she had mentioned about her familiar being a crow and raven. And I think that she's right. I think that this animal is obviously drawn to magical people. And I think that that's why so many of us identify with that bird. A little bit of color magic. Here's magical herbs. The Charge of the Goddess. This, being a huge horror movie fan, that's, it's embarrassing, but I admitted it in the other video, so I'll admit it here. One of my favorite movies, and it's ridiculous, but it's Blair Witch Project number two, Book of Shadows, which is so, so shameful. Um, but I just, I think I was at the right age, and it just, it didn't scare me or anything, but I like the characters. I love that there was a Wiccan character. Um, and one of the chants that she said, in the movie was this earth, water, fire, smoke, and I can't remember what she said, but I invoke. That always stayed with me. I thought, wow, what an amazing and easy chant to use to invoke deity. So I kept it, I use it, and it is from Blair Witch Project, Book of Shadows. <laughs> Here are some chants that myself and the coven that I am in, we do, I do, these are all ones that we all probably know a little bit, so I put them in here because I actually know the tune of them. So that's why they're here over other ones. Just a little binding spell. Here is my little section on love magic. So I don't see anything wrong with doing love magic as long as you're doing that magic on yourself or you're doing it on a willing person or you're using it in ways to make yourself maybe appear more attractive to that person. I don't agree with trying to take someone else's will. I definitely tried love magic like that growing up. Oh my God. Um, it never worked. And I, th I don't know if it really, if it really ever does work. Like, I don't know anyone who's cast a spell on someone and they fell madly in love and they're still together. It always ends in trouble or problems. Um, so when I look at ma love magic, I really look at it from the point of view of Anton LaVey. He kind of got into love magic in his book, The Satanic Witch, which I really, it's dated. <laughs> uh, it's kind of, nowadays it's a little silly, but I still really enjoy the book. And there are, there is 
information in there that is valuable and worth reading in my opinion and one of those things is the LeVay personality synthesizer which maybe someday I will do a video on it's way too much to go um, into today because this is about my book of shadows but it's really really cool and it's about kind of matching your mate to your to who you are and your attributes and qualities it's really really cool so that's kind of how I look at love magic maybe a little bit more in a practical way I guess I don't really do anything that's practical but I guess maybe with love magic here are some sonnets from William Shakespeare that I kept from high school here this page and this page as well as I think the back are dedicated to bibliomancy this is something that I just started doing last summer and I really need to do it again I have to really pick it up I've kind of slacked off but I it's just regular bibliomancy but instead of just finding that word and taking meaning in it I try to write a poem based on that word it also helps me kind of stretch my poetry writing muscles which I don't get to do very often and then I like to look back and see if any of the poetry or the lines in the poems were any kind of prophecies or anything like that. I'm really enjoying it and I just write the season and what the book is and the author. Here are the first set of pages dedicated to the Wheel of the Year. Here is kind of a silly self-portrait that I drew of kind of a chubby which um, I, I don't know why I did this for Samhain because Samhain's not really the Sabbath where I think it's about sex or sexiness unless you're going to a Halloween party in the past like you know 15 years but uh, anyway I decided to make Samhain a little bit sexy so this is my information here little family tree that I'm working on and then I have a little, another little meditation page or whatever you want to call it. It's, and it's sparkly. Yay, sparkles. Here is Yule and it is the poem stopping by the woods on a snowy evening. And I just, I feel, uh, it speaks to me about winter. It really does. That poem makes me think of Santa Claus. It makes me think of the magic of winter. And yeah, so I had to include it here. These I received in a peg and mail swap, so my partner sent me these and I put them in my book of shadows. Another collage that I did, uh, this is probably my favorite one in the book. In bulk. Another little collage. Ostara, a little drawing I did. I tried my best to ensure that at least 90% of the book is my own drawings, handwriting. I want my real like blood, sweat and tears to be in this book. I feel like the more time I spend with it, the more time I work in it, the more I force myself out of creative comfort zones, the more connected I feel to the book. So that's something I would really recommend to anyone who's looking to start a book of shadows. I'm going to take a little break from the sabbats and the only reason this happened is because I didn't properly plan which is fine I kind of realized that books gonna have its own personality and the way it wants to be so it's just things are out of order and kind of crazy but it works there's there's kind of method to the madness I guess which is a complete fluke all the moon information moon phases the names of the different moons blue moon a little quote I love this drawing down the moon I saw this in another youtubers video uh, Neela Nighthawk was is her name and it was awesome so I thought that I would put it in my book too. Drawing down the moon. This is actually my own whoops. Well it's cool. See before I had stuff here and then I decided to just close cover it up and change things around so I'll have to re-glue that but just proof if you don't like a page collage over it. This is my own theory on drawing down the moon. I tried to make as much of the correspondences and um, yeah, just look past the correspondences or if I'm describing something, it's all from my own perspective. It's not something I've copied, it's my own kind of experience. I try to do that as much as possible throughout here as well. 
the seven virtues and the angels which is a little bit of high magic here's a picture I drew when I was a kid I was I checked out a book from the library and it had this picture in it and I knew it had something to do with alchemy but I didn't really know what alchemy was and I certainly didn't know anything about really the occult because I was really young so this picture I found it and I put it in here I'm really happy I found that 13 goals of the witch I think I was a better at drawing when I was younger than now Beltane little wicker man a little verse from the wicker man movie a little honor a little nod to that Here's a page where I messed up and I made a collage and I really, really hated it. So I just tore it out and now it's got this kind of fun, weird texture. So I'm going to, my plan is to write over it and just kind of make something out of it. So don't be afraid to make mistakes in your book. Don't be afraid to tear things out, paint over things, collage over them, whatever you want to do. It's a greater shame to do nothing in your book than to, you know, and worry about making a mistake. Do your book justice and get writing. Get get in there. Here are some recipes. Another thing I tore out and wrote over. And I really like it more with that. Here are some more color correspondences. Just gets a little bit more in depth with it. Days of the week in the planetary chart. Five things to summon me. I just thought that was kind of fun. So I put that in there. I can at times be a little too serious and take this stuff too seriously and I like to with this book anyways I've decided to kind of stop that so I put some fun things in here too a card from my grandfather magic of the hours gemstones these are all ones that I own so it's kind of a small list I'm not super big into crystals I'm not I don't know I just don't really have that draw to them but I definitely I own some so I figured I should put the information in here. Exercise without purpose is just your is just basic motor skills. Use thought, will, and have purpose. I thought that was kind of cool, so it's in here. I saw these online and kind of did my own little renditions and put them in here for the elements. And then these are all just my thoughts on the elements, just my experiences with them. Water. I ran out of room. Water is my favorite element, so I should have known better that I would go on and on. But I added this here and it's all good. A page dedicated to the Virgin Mary. I grew up in a Catholic household. I was around the church for many years. It's definitely still a part of who I am. So I have a little page dedicated to Mary. This is another just little nod to my ancestors and my family. I don't follow Odin or worship him, but I definitely respect him. And I wanted to celebrate my ancestors because they would have worshipped him for sure. I hope my shadows hasn't been like just blocking everything off. Herbal Grimoire. These are just again herbs I've collected over the years. They're all stuff in my house. Stuff that if I need it at a moment's notice I could grab it. I'm really trying to do that with this book and only include items that I have, that I own, that I've used, that I know, I'm covered in dirt. <laughs> it's just, that's how I'm at the point that I'm at now. It's not about hopeful or wishful thinking of getting these exotic herbs or crystals. It's about what I have and what I can work with. And I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, so I've definitely gotten myself an okay collection for sure. Some pantry magics, all of that stuff. Mr. Winkles is snorkeling. I think you probably can hear him. He's enjoying the sunshine with me. He's a fat little pug. So, again, pantry magic. Magic from the yard and garden. So plants that I have and trees I can go to outside to get stuff from. All my essential oils that I use that I have. In their information how to blend them I suck at blending scents everything I make kind of stinks so this is just kind of help and guide me this one is just how to heal the body musings on life I wanted to include my philosophy on life and 
kind of vulgar because I can see the F word in there. <laughs> um, this is to help me with depression. Sometimes when my depression gets out of hand, if I have something to remind me in an easy way that I can just read why I'm here, what's my purpose, what I believe in, I find that very helpful. So I put that in here. And then I put it beside something that makes me feel good, which was when the local newspaper interviewed me around Halloween to talk about modern day witchcraft. It's a pretty big deal, at least to me. Here, uh, CBC also interviewed me to talk about the harvest moon. So those are my little feel good pages. Animals that I'm drawn to that are not my familiars and I don't feel a magic connection to, but I really like them, so they're in here. It's dogs, snakes, and pigs, if you're curious. This part is called My Name is My Song. When I went to a meditation workshop, the lady who was hosting it, she said an easy way to meditate is to just meditate on your name. And she advised us to write our names down and then write something as extravagant, as bold, to not be afraid and describe ourselves with each of those letters. So what I did is I went and I put this in the book and if I'm feeling like I need a little pick-me-up I'll read this and then when I meditate on my name which is easy to do it um, hopefully will bring to mind all of these kind of nice things I've said about myself. Chakra stuff. I think every book has one of those little pages. Notes from that workshop I went to. I kind of wish that I did not do this with the highlighter and that I put these notes in here. I don't want this to turn into a notebook or a place where I chart things or keep track of workshops. So I kind of regret doing that, but it's okay. It's in here and maybe someday I'll need it. A quote from Damien Eccles, who is someone that I really respect and admire. Magic of houseplants. So this is when I start getting into my houseplants. So there's with the chaos of the book, there's really plants back here and now we're back with plants up here. Um, plants that I own, how to take care of them, how to love them, what they require, what kind of magic they bring into your house. I'm obsessed with my plants. I play them music. I talk to them. I truly, truly love them. They're my children. So here are all of their care instructions and their little names like Tim. Tim is a special plant. We've got Pete and we had Bob and Midge for a while and then I changed their names to Alora and Adora because I got kind of a girl name vibe from those plants. Um, yeah, I've got all kinds of little buddies and uh, they're very special. Magical alphabets, which I don't really use. My cursive is hard enough to read, so that is its own magical alphabet. Birth months. This is cool. They're Back in St. John, back in the 80s and 90s, we kind of went through that whole satanic panic, but just of course on a much smaller scale. And there was a point, and I think this was the 90s, because I remember it, and the newspaper was reporting on witches on, like out Redhead, out by the ocean on the seaside. And there was a coven out there. And out on that road was this old house that's been abandoned for as long as I can remember. And the rumor kind of was is that that was the witch house. That's where they were practicing and sacrificing and all of that crazy kind of hyped up panic stuff. Anyways, all these years later, one of my best friends and I, we did go, we went into the house because it's pretty run down now. I mean, it's the doors are broken in and you can just walk into the house. It's really actually kind of sad. The wallpaper up there, there were some pieces that were really torn, so I took a little piece so I could have a little piece of that St. John history and a little piece of the witch house. Thoughts on magical tools and circle casting. I don't, I'm really kind of casual about circle casting. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think that you have to cast a circle to work magic. Someday maybe I'll talk more about that, but I wanted to add a little bit about magic circles in the book and I also talked a little bit about tools. I think that the most important thing when we get into magical tools is that you don't need any. Your hands are your chalice. They can be your plate. They can be your wand or your athame. Like th there are so many things our hands can do that you really really don't need anything to do a ritual. There are some items that, oh there's a little ant crawling on my book. Hello little ant. Um, 
sorry, I get distracted so easily. But these are the tools that I like, the ones that I kind of use, and they're simple things like a lighter. I mean, it's not crazy stuff. I like to keep it simple. So that kind of ends my light side, my kind of, you know, just witchcraft and all of that good stuff. My, I'm really, really dirty because I've been kind of digging in the dirt while I've been talking to you guys. So excuse my dirty hands. Then when we flip the book over, I don't know if you can hear Mr. Winkle snoring, but he's having a little afternoon nap. We kind of go into the side, the section dedicated to my shadow, which is very important to me. Possibly more important, or more to my personality, maybe to say, than the other side of the book. So this is the shadow section. This is my favorite section. And since we're talking about the shadow, I just want to point out this rock here. I've been living in this house for the past five years. And after every ritual or spell I do, I put the candle stubs under this rock. And I just think about how funny it will be if we move and someone moves here and they move this rock and they find all these candle stubs and burnt up pieces of paper. And God knows, you know, what else I've kind of stuck under this rock as my holy sacred place. I also feel and then this is going to sound crazy, but I get the vibe that somewhere's near this rock or somewhere's in this yard, a dog has been buried. And there's no reason for that, for me to think that. There's no, nothing's ever happened to make me suspect it, but I just get the vibe that somewhere's on this like kind of area in the yard, a dog has been buried here. So I'm not gonna do any digging. I'm not gonna disturb him, um, but I just, I don't know, it's weird. I'm not a psychic like that. I don't pick up ghostly kind of vibes, but not like that anyways, not like in a medium kind of sense or to say, oh, this person was buried here or anything like that. But I definitely am getting that vibe from this spot and I have since we moved in. Anyways, back on topic. The sun's a little bit glary, so hopefully you can see this okay. This is similar to the other side of the book when you kind of first open it and there's a collage, except that this one it has kind of darker images and it is special to my, uh, my shadow. And there's a little poem here and I love this. You must break the shell to bits for fear, lest the witches should make it a boat, my dear. For over the sea, away from home, far by night, the witches roam. I talked about that a little bit in one of my other videos and about sailor stories and stuff, and, and there it is again. So we get right into it with the medallion of St. Benedict and the Roman rite of exorcism. Um, again, growing up Catholic, when I saw the exorcist, it moved me, it jarred me. It literally scared the ever-living life out of me. It changed me. <laughs> um, and it's one of my favorite movies of all time. So I had to honor that. I had to honor that feeling, that time in my life when I had that experience. And I was just so afraid, so afraid. And uh, so I'm honoring that through this. And I'm also honoring probably my favorite movie. It's long. All of these places where you see the stars, that is when, let me see, blah, 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 blah. yes, so that's actually when you cross yourself. And then here, that's like a little pause. So I've kind of created little symbols and stuff throughout to make it a little bit easier for me. No, I lied to you guys. The stars are when you throw holy water on the possessed person. The little guys here are when you cross yourself. That's right, because they're there and there. So at the end. And then you just keep spraying holy water on that possessed person. <laughs> a fireman of God. So it's long. I was dedicated and a big amen at the end. I figure too, it might be handy to have the exorcism right in here because I just never know what I'm mess messing with. Seven deadly sins and their associated demon. I plan to get into doing a little similar as I did with the angels and do all the demons and what they're associated with and what you can call on them for. Nine satanic statements in the nine or the eleven satanic rules. Um, 
some people live by the nine noble virtues, some people live by the rule of three, some people follow the Ten Commandments. I am not a Satanist, but I definitely do live my life by, by these rules. Um, if you read them, they make sense, and at least to me and, and to a lot of people. And uh, so that's, and this is kind of why I don't call myself a Wiccan, because of my love for just Anton LaVey and my respect for the Church of Satan and my respect for the people that are in the Church of Satan. Um, I'm not a Satanist, so I don't call myself that. I'm not a Wiccan because of this. Um, so it's just kind of, this is a big part of my path. This is a big part of my own kind of philosophy, I guess. It really resonated with me. How to bind a sorcerer? I don't think that people are casting spells on people these days, um, but you just never know. Book of 50 Names for Magic. This is from the Necronomicon, which I know it's a fictional book, but again, when I was a kid, this really resonated with me, so I've just, I had to put it in here. The Infernal Name, so all the little demons and old gods and all of those amazing people hanging out in the down below. This little quote from Nietzsche, which I really like. Whoever fights monsters should look to it that he himself does not become a monster. And when you gaze long into the abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. I really, really like that. The Jezebel curse. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Super cool. Goddess of darkness, queen of fright, Nick's great mother of night. This is my little love letter to Nyx. I am definitely a follower and lover of Nyx. She was the first goddess that I discovered when I realized I wasn't a Christian. Poison Garden, so the same as my other list of herbs. These are all ones that I own and it's just kind of a nice little reminder of what to in not ingest. Here are some herbs for ex hexing and cursing and um, some of them aren't poisonous like chili powder. You can use that to heat up an enemy so or onion. You can use it to invoke strife or sadness or poppy seed for arguments and love. I mean all terrible things that you shouldn't do on the day to day but it's definitely good just to have the information in your back pocket even if it's just to make yourself feel better. I love this little thing. To rid the body or home of demonic infestation, burn the heart and liver of a fish on hot incense bricks. The smell will drive the demons back to Egypt. And that is straight from the Bible. A love letter to Anubis. Same as my other side, my musings on death. So what death means to me. A little quote from Clive Barker from Thief of Always. Alistair Crowley's Hymn to Pan. He's looking quite handsome and dapper in that picture. How to Conjure Spirits. These are my tried and tested and things I've done. Have I had much success? I've had some weird things happen. Nothing crazy, but I have had some weird things happen. This is the astrology chart that my very dear good friend did for me. So I just kind of copied it into my book. By sulfur, fire, and brimstone, I conjure thee. So I'm going to kind of decorate this page and negative sides of each of the zodiac signs. I am a Cancer, so we have clingy, check, sensitive, check, closed off. I don't agree with that. I'm pretty open and emotional, which I definitely am, which I don't think being emotional is a bad thing. In reason, I guess. Him to Satan. Annabelle Lee. Little Annabelle Lee, little Poe for my inner goth kid. A love letter to Lucifer. Astrology charts and planets again. So just going back into my astrology again. This is me not planning and not really paying attention to the space in my book and where I've previously written things. It's all good and just kind of keeps going. I love it. It was amazing that she did this for me. So that's it. That's all I have so far. I'm going to be doing a lot more work. I've got some more ideas and pages that I have to work on. I have some bibliomancy to do and all of that good stuff. 
I really appreciate you hanging out with me and just kind of enjoying some time in the sunshine and if you stayed with me through this whole video I absolutely love you and thank you for hanging out and to reward you I will show you my spooky backyard swamp <laughs> I call this dead man's swamp it um, well a man actually did die not in the swamp itself but in the lake that's connected to the swamp so I've lovingly termed it dead man's swamp and it's my one of my favorite little spooky witchy places and there's a little gnome so thank you for being here thank you for spending some time outside with me and have an amazing day